Jay, stop touching me. Stop touching me, Jay. I'm not a I'm a heterosexual man, Jay. Stop it. Okay? Okay, well. Okay. All right, thank you. Those were Thought you liked it. That's what you thought. <laughs> Those were the words or, or something similar to what State Representative Daryl Metcalf was caught saying at a meeting. He uh, Here's the quote him exactly from the Washington Post. He says, look, I'm a heterosexual. I have a wife. I love my wife. I don't like men, as you might, but stop touching me all the time. That's what Daryl Metcalf told a gentleman with the last name Bradford, who's uh, another representative who began laughing. Metcalf continued saying, keep your hands to yourself. If you want to touch somebody, you have plenty of people on your side of the aisle who might like it. I don't. So now there has been a, a big movement to push Daryl Metcalf to resign. And if not resign, there is a movement to remove him from leadership roles within the Pennsylvania House of Representatives. Daryl Metcalf is a local representative in, in southwestern Pennsylvania. Okay. And it's just another... Another another thing that's happening in the world in, in this crazy world of just of people coming out and, and, just, and being psycho. Yeah, what is going on? <laughs> I I don't understand it. People touch each other all the time, and I don't understand what he's af afraid of. Is he afraid that he's going to to catch a gay bug like a gay disease, and he's going like I? <laughs> it's the dumbest thing I've ever heard of. It is so. The question today is, should Daryl Metcalf resign? Should he be removed from leadership positions? Why do we expect our representatives and senators to be moral people? That's another question I have, because there seems to be this big thing out there where everyone seems to think that they should be role models. And, and I'm not saying that they should stay in their position. I think yeah. it's you know good to get rid of these people. But do we really... Uh, are our expectations of them really that high after everything we've seen just this year, let alone all of the other years that, that we've been existing and observing politics in this country? I mean, hmm. it's it's a pretty we, – we have a pretty interesting history going back to Civil War era where you literally had politicians – they had one politician who literally caned another one, which is – like attacking somebody with a cane, beating them with a cane. So I, I just yeah, that don't kind know. of touching was allowed back then. Yes, yeah, so I just don't know where we've come in the society where we think that a politician was ever somebody to be a role model or, or model ourselves after. We've got Jay Cooper here. I'm Brian Crawford. You're listening to the Rivers Edge Radio Network, Pittsburgh's voice for local music at riversedgepgh.com. And the fact that anyone's surprised, this is what kills me. Metcalf will not resign he says that he does he chose the words he said and he and he chose them for a reason mm. so he's not apologizing he's not claiming to just speak out of anger he's mm. claiming to be calculated in his choice of wording mm -hmm. and i'm well, not surprised is this his given, first term or? oh no metcalf has been in office for a long long time and long there, there's time. no way he's going to be voted out either so mm -hmm. unless he steps down and, and that's another crazy thing. He, he has no chance of getting voted out, in my opinion. He'll win his re-election uh, easily, handily. Is he backed by the president, perhaps? He probably is. He seems to be in that club. He is a Republican. He's extremely conservative. Oh, well, then he's not going anywhere, folks. Well, he's not going anywhere because the people – he is basically – he was Trump before Trump. So Rick Saccone, who's running for Tim Murphy's seat – in his announcement, he said that he's going to fight for those values that Trump stands for and how mm. he was Trump before Trump. Daryl Metcalf probably taught Rick Saccone how to be like Trump. So he's like the grand wizard who's been kind of on the fringe of conservatism for a long, long time. I used to be pretty active in the Republican Party, and he's the kind of guy that other Republicans look at and go, holy shit, this guy's batshit insane. <laughs> that's the kind of guy Daryl Metcalf is. Oh, man. So that's the big news. That's, Should yeah. he be stripped of leadership positions and power? Should he resign? Will he get voted back into office? Those are the questions that I would like to hear from you on the Facebook Live chat, or you can 
Yeah. Tweet me Post on them. Twitter at River Talk PGH. You can tweet Jay at Coop Troop Comedy. That's right. So, Jay, do you look up to any politicians? Did you ever look up to a politician? Yeah, I looked up to Obama. Okay. That was my dude, man. Well, pol- pol- po- you know, political policies aside, I mean, the dude, I- I'm all about character. Sure. I go by, I go by character. Not so much because, you know, anybody in politics will promise a lot of stuff and they'll probably do half of that if, you know. I, but the dude, I mean, he had a presence about him. He had the look. He had the swagger. He had people's ears. He was funny. He was funny, entertaining. People he, loved him. He brewed beer in the White House, yes, which a did. lot of people don't know that, which yes, I think did. that's pretty badass. Put a basketball court. Isn't that crazy that, that – just put this in, in your mind, <laughs> this image in your mind. Obama brewed beer in the White House. Mm-hmm. And came across as a as a reasonable person. Mm-hmm. He came across as someone who's sane. Mm-hmm. He could put two thoughts together. Trump has never drank alcohol. And what the fuck happened there? Yeah, you would think he does. You would think he would be the one that would be like boozing it in the corner. Yeah. Maybe he's on something else. He must be. I don't know. That's a good point about President Obama where – a lot of people act like acted like he was some sort of like moral plague, but really, I can't remember a single controversy surrounding him that was personally related. You know, there were there's different things in policy and things like that that every president's going to have based on where you stand on any issue. But I don't ever remember anybody. I don't, I don't ever remember a, per, a scandal coming down mm-hmm. surrounding President Obama that had to deal with his character, as you right. said, or, or anything of a personal nature. Everything was policy-based. Mm-hmm. Nothing, Nick? Well, hold up. You look like you was about to hold say on. something. Hold on. Wait, wait. Before you, before you jump on, we don't, i got to introduce you before you can talk. We've got Hank the Businessman who is here in studio. And you got to also uh, hold the mic. So we've got Hank the Businessman. He's here in studio. He is going to be talking. We're going to talk with him in a little bit about a project he has mm-hmm. coming up. But right now, you, uh, you, you disagree. Why do you disagree? Um, you, you guys remember when th- that picture circulated? Yeah, we can't hear you. Good. All right. Sorry, everybody. That picture circulated of him with a joint in, in his hand. And that was uh, from... He was I in could, college, though. Yeah, but still, yeah. like, still, like, more on a personal, <laughs> personal basis. Uh, I would say that was the only thing that I could really point to. Yeah, but is that really questions? I mean, that, it depends on whether you're uh, uh, okay. Hold up. Now, hold on. We've uh, got. You want to introduce your friend? <laughs> yes, Jay? I definitely so want to introduce the, you've my got the... friend, fellow comedian, Miss Christina McNeese. Hey. One of the funniest sisters I know. Go ahead. Um, I think like. Okay, is this better? Yeah, it's good. So, like, in a, uh, I mean, I don't think weed, like, a joint, and certainly not in college, is a character flaw at all. And that's exactly what I was just about to say. It really depends on what your definition of a character flaw is. I would think. Hell, GW did coke in college, didn't he? I don't know. He may he have. Coke. Maybe in the White House, too. You never know. <laughs> that would explain I mean, that. No, I agree, Christina. I don't think that. that that is a character flaw, in my opinion. I mean, it, in the grand scheme of things, like, who gives a shit? Now, an issue that, yeah, I don't care. You don't care. Do you care? Is that really, like, a sticking issue with, with you and, no, and I, the I, former president? No, What's no, up, no. guys? Just to, just to make mention of the fact that, you know, throughout Obama's eight years in office— he at one point there was that little bit of controversy. I mean, I don't have a problem with it. None of us, none, none of us have it. But um, not at all. But um, you know, I, if anything, just one one little you know blip because some people still aren't cool with it. Um, versus Trump, where I mean, how many already? Like ten. Right. Well, the thing is, is like with, now here's the big difference, and this is what I've always said. So when Trump ran for election, and everyone said, "Oh, he's got all these issues. He'll never make it," and I said, "No, it's not true." The reason why scandals take down politicians is because they put themselves in this this frame, this picture frame as as being this perfect individual. They hold themselves up to that standard. And then when a scandal hits, everyone's shocked. 
Mm-hmm. It's like when John Edwards cheated on his wife while she was battling cancer. Yeah, everyone was that. shocked about that because, uh-huh. like, holy shit! Here's Mister, you know, Eagle Scout. At least he pretends to be like an Eagle Scout. He's not a true Eagle Scout, like <laughs> moi, but he pretends to be an Eagle Scout. <laughs> and then he's shown oh, his yeah. true character, and then everyone hates him. Mm-hmm. With Trump, everyone knew he was a jackass. No one was going to be surprised by anything that Trump has to say. So therefore, he can get away with anything. And I compared him to Bill Clinton. And mm. to this day, and I'm, I'm, I would like to see an, a different, a change in the conversation surrounding Bill Clinton. Okay. Because everybody has, a, so he slept with an intern, Monica Lewinsky. He mm-hmm. was in his 40s. She was in her early 20s, right? Mm-hmm. Word. He's a man of a ton of power. Yeah. Probably, arguably more powerful than anyone in the United States, mm-hmm. given that he's the president. She has no power. She's an intern. Right. You have a rich man taking advantage of a young woman. At the time, everyone said, oh, he's Bill. He legally plays the saxophone. He's great. We like Bill. Look at the economy. He was good on the saxophone. And that was always the argument. Oh, he was cool. We like him. He's our guy. Oh, who cares? Yeah, if he gets a blowjob in the Oval Office, but the economy's doing well, let him get more blowjobs. That was the argument that was made. Everyone made a million excuses to him for him. To this day, everyone makes excuses for Bill Clinton, yet... You've got Weinstein, you've got, uh, you've got, who are some of the other ones? You've got all of the people that are coming out right now as these, these rich white guys taking advantage of young women. Mm-hmm. And they're all monsters, yet it was not so long ago that everybody just kind of like winked and nodded, uh, gave a little elbow to the side about Bill Clinton and looked the other way and made jokes about it. And he's still revered as this phenomenal president and nobody has ever really nobody ever questions his moral character yeah so i think like that's like a two-way thing i think that's like a two-way thing one like the main difference is obama's black and well i'm not talking um, about obama i'm no, talking no, no, about I'm saying there's a whole the difference is this michelle obama couldn't have a shoulder out trump's wife is completely naked but why do you how obama's do you ex- how do you explain handled, bill clinton then where everybody just kind of looked the other way there because there's, I'm, I'm getting it okay so Obama's scandal of a joint, Trump said literally grab him by the pussy on camera and is still the president. So it's a two-way thing. People don't like black people. People also don't like women. So there's like a lot of racism and there's a lot of sexism. So like in a lot of society's eyes, that's okay. Like that's fine. Until you have a daughter or somebody in your family that something has happened to, then, you know what I mean? Like, people, like, until something happens to them, then they don't understand. But what, is it okay with Trump? I, I actually would disagree with that. I think people are crazily up in arms over just about everything he does. I mean, I do mean, you— I mean, they're up you... in arms about it, but how many supporters does he have that he could— he could shit Yeah, but you could say page. the same thing. You could say the same thing about, a, about President Obama. His support base never would is, leave him see, over Clinton, different policies. Not the same. Clinton Color was makes cool. a big difference, and so does sex. That's yeah, all there is to it. Okay, but that I think you could see it. a huge difference between the way that Bill Clinton was treated versus the way that Trump is being treated or Harvey Wine, uh, Wein- not Harvey Weinstein. What's who's the one in the Senate? The Bill guy who Clinton also wasn't saying grab by the pussy. He was talking about he was Biden playing a saxophone. So it was like different. Like this oh, is yeah. not the same. Yeah, but he got caught incoming. Yeah, but he actually caught caught. I mean, you're asking, so that's what I'm I know. saying. That well, I'm, it's a conversation, why. and I'm telling you what the difference is. He didn't just say it. He actually got caught having sex with an intern while being the president so i mean right not that you should ever say it that's horrible but but what's worse saying something or or doing and i'm not saying that trump should get a pass all i'm saying is that there it seems to be between the two of them isn't anthony weiner who sent the naked pictures of himself yeah that was anthony yeah i would agree with that i think it's all horrible wait a minute but i just want to know i just want to know why in today's why in today's world still to this day even with all of this coming out with the me too movement is bill clinton still just completely given a pass 
on on his issues. I mean, the same reason. Who's the guy who like had a, a girl, a daughter, and then married her? You know what I mean? What? <laughs> the, yeah. You know what I'm no. saying? The oh, we talking reason. about Woody Allen? Yeah. Exactly. Woody Allen's cool. He didn't have that a daughter. That was a stepdaughter, though. That, that was a stepdaughter. Oh, it was his stepdaughter? That's still pretty much. I mean, that is still messed it's up. Like because, well, because come on, everybody got an like, Asian fantasy. Or is that just me? It's Sorry. Just <laughs> people decide to care about what they want to care about. Yeah. No, you know, I, I they think that's they want to blame. That's you know a good who, point. You know it's, who it depends on who about. you like and I tell you who Brian cares who do about. I care about? He cares about Hans. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I do care about Hans. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Care about Hans. That is an funeral. That is an <laughs> I could tell you this. Yeah. <laughs> since you brought it up, I wasn't gonna talk about I, know, right? I wasn't gonna right. talk about this, but we're talking about all of these creeps. We're talking about these these perverts. We're talking about people getting blowjobs at work. They're living when my fantasy. I, I cannot like do any of that. Thing, though, but. All I'm saying, all I'm saying <laughs> is all of the this 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 moral the moral swamp that is Washington <laughs> in that kind of horrible culture that exists mm. in the political world, in Hollywood. When you're dealing with Hans. They're never going to ask for any favors on the couch when you no, go in to not. do business. They are family owned, family friendly. Hans is a reputable company, and if you know somebody who is looking like they're uh, they're coming to their end times, you Whoa. don't don't wait to the last minute. Be sure to get your arrangements set up with the only family owned funeral home in Millville, who's also known for I, green burials, so you could save uh, help save the planet. I got to say this. Okay, my, on, yeah. my, my friend Brazil, she posted something. She said, Morgan Freeman dated his granddaughter. Really? She was a step-grandchild, but it's still not right. That's Yeah, that's crazy. I didn't know about that. I, I still like you, Morgan I, Freeman. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I still I like you. I don't know if I can, I can hear that. I, don't, I might have to unhear that. <laughs> right? <be>. Right? <laughs> so we do have... from the man who played God. You don't want to hear that story. No, I'm <laughs> <laughs> he was in Shawshank, man. Huh? Well, I could say that something really God. bad right there. He plays and God. Me. Was it? Was he? Was he playing the role of the father or the son? Because you know he. No, could... he was not. Uh, what was that? Uh, that was um, Jim, Bruce man. Almighty. Yeah, Bruce Almighty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. yeah he played God. Okay, so we've got uh, Christina <laughs> McNeese here in studio, and you are in the finals for the improv Pittsburgh Improv Comedy Competition. Yes. yes. Now, do you, yeah. do, you do you do you do political comedy? Um, I generally avoid it. Because Thank God. Nice. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I got one thing to say. Now we can clap for you. Now I, I was just, I was just having a conversation. <laughs> go go I ahead. I have one thing to say about them two being in it. I'm hating because I didn't make it. Oh, no. <laughs> I took the shout, hit for y'all. Shout out. I, I brought the crowd back, and every time you bring the crowd back, you never go through. They <laughs> never ever go through. The three, Shout out to Howie D, man. That Shout sucked out to Howie. for, they for suck? falling on the sword well, for us, man. I appreciate you. Man. <laughs> well, we've got two of the best right here yeah, I got it. in the studio. <laughs> so I expect if one of y'all make it, if I don't get to open up for y'all, and y'all get to open up for people, I know where your car is. I know where your house is. Yeah. I know where your job is. <laughs> To say, I'm not in any threats. It's a promise. Anyway, let's go back to the. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm glad, Christina, that you don't do political comedy because I, I'm. We were talking last night with a, a friend of mine about how, in in my opinion, late night comedy sucks. It's gone downhill. Mm, it's yeah. in the toilet. Well, and depends. I think Stephen Colbert is the worst. I'll be I honest. Love I, do Colbert, you? I, yeah, I feel like, I like he, the Colbert Report when it was. I like comedy that. Central. Yeah, yeah. That one I like cool. that. Hilarious. I don't like his him, him as uh, the new David Letterman. I feel He's like kind of a try hard at times. I don't even think he tries hard. I don't think he tries at all. I think he hardly tries. I go and I listen. Anytime I listen to him, now granted, I don't get to see the whole thing because I, I work overnight, overnight, so I'm seeing like clips of it. Mm -hmm. But it seems like he literally is just reading Facebook posts about Trump, and it's just kind of like, <laughs> can't you come up with anything else? I mean, sure, you throw in a little politics with it, but. But, you know, yeah, he you, shits you on Trump a lot. Well, well sure. I mean, it's easy. It's easy, it's easy to do. It's easy material. It's easy material. It's easy material. But that's kind of my other shit going on. That's kind of my Trump point. Trump should get a He's writing like the credit. main focus. You know I mean? <laughs> that's kind of my point. You know, anybody, I can go up there and read tweets that Trump wrote. Like, it, there's but just you're not nothing. Stephen Colbert. That's right. I'm Brian Crawford, and I'm the master of Millville. Sure, that's yeah, right. Yeah, Don't yeah, ever I was forget that. For John so. Oliver, because of John Oliver, I made the Daily Show that when um, we had that big uh, conference here. The G8 Summit. I was on there cutting up with him. Yeah, John so Oliver, I, I was. I made. He, I made I, Daily I, Show. I watched him a couple times. Time He's pretty good. Daily yeah. Show. So tell us about your your comedy. 
Um, what do you do then? You don't do politics? Yeah, be honest. About what I talk about? Yeah. I, mean, I pretty much talk about whatever I think about or whatever that, I Which is scary. Um, people <laughs> say I'm scary sometimes, but yes. like... She's not allowed around blunt or sharp objects well, or anything that goes shoots, fizzle, or pop. Well, I know. It's like, it's like <laughs> here's the thing. I love video games, so like a lot of my jokes are about shooting people in video games. But it's not like I want, well, there are some people that I at least like to slap the shit out of them. For, but I don't like actually want to like kill anyone. You want to do a like, mass slapping? I like video games. <laughs> yeah, she likes um, the role-playing ones. Yeah. <laughs> a couple of the last topics I talked about, um, I'm a weed advocate. I think weed actually should be legal. That's right. Um, yeah, everybody. I'm, I'm going to get my yeah. prescri- prescription because I'm, I'm short. I'm depressed. Right, like, and I'm not even talking about medicinal weed. I mean, just recreational weed. Like, all weed should be legal. I look, should be able I got, to, like, look, let me tell you something. To my friends and my I don't family. look, man. I want to know if I can be good with Gateway and go get my free medical marijuana. <laughs> Or I'm something. good with Gateway, but I mean, it's, it's anything. Like. <laughs> no, I agree. I think I, I agree with you completely on the on the the weed issue. For I mean, the amount of money that we spend incarcerating people for for doing s- well, yeah, that's, for a, something, that's a whole other subject. For something yeah, that there's money in that. You drive past the casino. You drive past the strip club. You but dri- drive past like Chick Fil A, where they have like thousand calorie meals at one time. You can drink. You can smoke. You can do all this other shit, but you can't. Well, what I thought was funny, there was this. Uh, the town I grew up in, I, well, I grew up in the, the Norwin School District area. I grew up in North Irwin, but North Huntington, which surrounded North Irwin, they wanted to put a brewery in. And I remember these people were up in arms, and it wasn't even going to be a brewery and tap room. It was literally just the brewery. And literally, the, the argument against it was our kids will have to walk past it. Whoa. Sorry. It's all right. Yeah, we got to make sure that. when we come on air that this, there's no sound. <laughs> so uh, these Thanks, people were Jay up, Cooper. These people were <laughs> up in arms over this brewery, and I'm like, it's not like hookers are going to be hanging out the window. It's a legitimate business <laughs> it, where people are. And my thing is, what is so wrong with hookers? Sure. Sorry, they provide a service to the yeah. public. They do. I'm tired of slut Use what shaming. You got like, I talk you about know. hating ass bitches. Like, there's always hating ass bitches around. I talk about yes, that. Sir, bitches can also be a man. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, like, a man can be a bitch. So, I talk about stupid ass dudes in my inbox because there's always at least one of those. You know what I mean? There's just an endless variety of shit to talk about. So, so what kind of, what was the process like? How do you apply for this comedy competition? You just show up and like. Oh, you just show up. Well, I mean, you have to like. What you have to like. You have to contact. Well, first of all, you gotta you gotta know T. You Rowe. Yeah. You, 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 you gotta know. Oh, you, I didn't know. How, oh, yeah, I yeah. yeah. <laughs> it extends. That's because it's black. Um, you gotta talk to. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta talk to uh, T. Rowe, Tony Rowe, because okay. he runs the yeah. um the open mics and the comedy competitions. Um, he's been running it the last what four or five years, yeah. and um. Yeah, he'll put, he'll put you in. If you want in, you're in. But after that, it's it's up to you. You got to bring people, and hopefully they, you know, you get them to vote for you, and then you got to win over the other people to get them to vote for you too. Because unfortunately, in this racket, it's not about it's not really based on talent. It's about how many people you bring to the shit. Because I've seen people who were really funny that didn't advance because somebody who never did comedy before brought 35 people with them. And they vote for them, and then they moved on. So uh, first I mean, of all, so is it just that's, that's, that's the hustle? That's the how politics. Many is that, uh, that's kind of interesting, though, because uh, you know you, you've got really funny people on one end, mm-hmm. and then you've got other people on the other end who are really good at the business end of it, and like, all right, well, I can get X amount of people, and you know they they might be incredibly receptive. You know, where do you find that balance? And should I spend that extra hour working on my set, or should I spend that extra hour? going out and talking to people and trying to get as many people to my show. And it's like uh, both. You could do that, but it's so fucking tedious, man. Yeah, but, uh, you, well, but that's part I mean, of the that's business. The grind, that is part of the business. That's part yeah. of the business. You can't have one without the other. That's they, true. they both have to exist say, together. Like, they don't have business sense, but it's not even business sense sometimes. Sometimes it's like Pittsburgh's really little. So like if you're from Pittsburgh and you're born here, your whole family's probably here and can come to shit. Like I'm from Chicago, so... My mm. parents are here. My kids are here. 
So if my family was here, like I would pack, I could pack the improv with my right. family. Right, right. If, you know? if I'm from, from Buffalo, Christine, I'm from but, Buffalo. But, but, but Christine, so if but, 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 I, if Christine, I did you shows do in really Buffalo, really well, would you do it? You're, 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 when you have, a well, really here's good the question: out. How do you yeah. vote? You, do, you do better I mean, than me. Like hitting up people, like look, mm-hmm. I like. No, I mean, I don't know about the next one. Look, I'm not playing just because I'm like, look, like the first couple, the first couple, I felt like I did well, but nobody came. You know what I mean? And I'm just like, I can't like do this without you helping me. Christina right. McNeese, mm-hmm. Hank the Businessman, in with Jay Cooper, Howie D. Mack, and myself, Brian Crawford, on the mm-hmm. River's Edge Radio Network. Christina is in the finals for the Improv Comedy Competition. How does the voting actually go for that competition? Do you just vote for one person? Um, well, the finals the, are totally different. So yeah, we're in the finals now, so it's a little bit different, but they still have the voting ballot. Um, How many people? Um, well, oh, it's Lord. supposed to be 10, and but it, it's 15 I mean, now because so many. Damn. Yeah, so yeah. And but how got, many votes? And they got to pick three can, out of that. Oh, so you can vote for three Damn. people. Well, no, no, no. You wow. could. I think you could pick up to. I think it's up to five. Yeah. Okay. But okay. they're gonna pick like top there's only three. yeah they're, they're gonna pick the top three. There's only a first, second, and third place in this one. So. No, but I mean you could you could you can select five people yourself on the yes, ballot. Yes, you could. One. You could. So um, that is so actually. So for those who come to see me. Vote for me, but do not vote for anybody else. Especially Sorry, Christina. Christina. Yeah. I'm just, I'm just saying because if you vote, I mean, because I'm saying you vote for her, and then more people vote for her, then that's more votes over mine. See, I shit, actually you know prefer so. <laughs> and then we got to win over the judges too. So hopefully, that's, that's, hopefully that's what, the judges, whoever yeah. they are, and hopefully well, they like us because we, you know, it'll be more balanced that way. That's why I like the total finals because it's actually more balanced when the, you could actually have real judges, real other, you know, uh, they're, you're judged by other comedians. Right. And hopefully they're not all biased and because shit. Because the like girl they, that came in, um, what's the girl? Uh, Jasmine that came in uh, what third when she tied for third. Yeah, she didn't she, bring anybody. She didn't bring nobody straight from, from Cleveland, Cleveland, man. But she here's won the thing: place last that's one thing I will give them credit for. That's a true way to to try to find a winner when you can vote for multiple people. That's yes. always been my criticism of, like, for example, the city paper voting like the best of. You can yeah. only vote for one person. Yeah, you could vote multiple times, but you can only vote for one person. So in that situation, you've got the person who gets all of their friends who goes out and literally like pimps their brand. Please vote for me. My, you know, some, I need your That's votes. Like I know, Versus, right? So, like, the, some people did legitimately win that, or actually, everybody won, legitimately won. But, but my point is, in that case, yes, you can campaign, bring a bunch of people in, they're going to vote for you, and then you could win. But if you do a thing where you can vote the best of five, you might vote for the person who asked you to come, but then you'll vote for the person you actually liked as well. Mm-hmm. And then if you win by getting a bunch of people's second votes. It's the store votes that count, and you can still win. But it's just like elections where people are shady as fuck. So yeah, I mean, people are shady. They're not going to vote for people that they even like. If you want your family to win, you're not going to even oh, vote yeah. for other people you like. But that's kind of uh, so. I agree with you. You know what I mean? And then but the. Know. But in that case, I no, you're right that people will play that game, but mm-hmm. it's hard to tr- to organize, I feel like, a bunch of people to be like, only vote for me and no one else. Like, you could tell yeah, them that. Yeah, that's hard to do. You could tell them that, but then they could still go in there and do whatever yeah. they want. And anyway. like, you know what, this one, this but one I think was that, pretty funny, too. Yeah. And then you, by doing that, you don't think that happens? You no. could you, you could, you could fuck me over, all my you know? friends, only vote for me, they would only vote for me. It wouldn't be any like, yeah, oh, that's... well, I don't know. Maybe yeah, they'd yeah, be like, yeah. fuck that. We want her to win. Yeah. <laughs> Even if you I need well, friends about, like that. Hey. Like, like, right. I'm... But I wouldn't like, but you can't like be all the way to the finals and completely not be funny at all. That, you know and, I mean? and, that's, okay, less, and that's the crazy funny, part because we got people in the finals. No disrespect to y'all. Well, Couple people. Some, yeah, yeah. Somebody's watching. Oh. Right. This is like, right. In case they're I'm watching trying this, here, I'm know. trying. Well, fuck that, man. This is my fourth year. I'm sorry, man. I should have well, gone on. already. Okay. This is my fourth fucking year. I want to win, and I'm sick Team of these two. no talent. Ain't never did an open mic. Ain't never been on the grind. Unfunny motherfuckers go making it to the finals and shit, and they better not win because if they do, I'm rioting. We well, ain't gonna it's talk bullshit. about the guy who brought okay. like 80 people from his church. Then all his people. Oh from yeah! Him. Oh yeah! Yeah, the country, the country dude, the, uh, the, the, the country wow. preacher. Would, oh, well, slash the, veteran. No, the, the part that really pissed me off. Why went you up there? Then everybody wanted to take pictures with me. I was standing way over there. You was funny. You was the funniest one. Why went you up there, baby? Because you ain't vote for me. Exactly. Then he, then he, then they go to tell me. Well, you know, he made he guilted us to come here, but you was the funniest one, so he made his vote for him. So I'm sitting there like, don't you could have voted. That, they could have voted for you too. Damn. That's it. that's. That's for, really for all for, for the eighty people he brought. Also, what kind of shitty friend is that? They told me that you could, was dead. You, you, you could, could, so, could so, heard it. Christina, what is your strategy for winning? 
The poison concept. everybody. We'll see you win. Bring in my egg game. And poison <laughs> them. What, what is Bring the prize? What are we? What are we all? What are we working here for? Uh, is it uh, Will? Not, okay. not really much. Will but will okay. to a comedian. Will with. <laughs> <laughs> right. All right. True. True. All right. True. Well, for first place, you you get three hundred dollars, and you get to open for a national ad. How national? Like who? Like who? Well, they they choose based on your humor, and they compare it to the other comics. Um, second place, you get to open for a national act, but you don't get the money. Third place, you get to run an open mic for a month. So, and, and that's a paid gig, so that works too. And I will take either three. I don't care, all right? I'll take you either one, one of them. Yeah. I want to be one of them. Who's been, like, what were some of the past There's national There's only been acts? one woman. Also. Oh, really? Wow. Which is until, one of my favorite hero until this year. ever. Yeah. Her that? name is Samantha Bentley. Samantha Bentley. She Fucking hilarious. Do you know, ever um, met my here's the funniest life. part yes. about that win, right? So, you know, she wasn't going to come. I had to make her go. Really? I used to be like, Sam, yeah. you got to right, Tell us. She didn't even want to do this. I want to hear this story from her. Howie. Oh, my yeah, goodness. Yeah, tell, tell Howie, tell us the story. Let me explain about Samantha B. Here, here's the beginning. First of all, I know I, I got her into doing comedy, right? I used to, I was jitney. I used to ride around and then I had a show called Off the Grill, right? Then I had her come on it and she just killed it. And she, then I got her to get up and actually start doing stand up. So anyway, that day, because her for some reason she, as funny as she is, she doesn't she does not think she's that funny. I don't know what the hell for. That day she came and won. She wasn't gonna come. It was like eight o'clock. She was like, I don't know if I'm. I said, if you Are you serious? Yeah, I she was, was all in her ear all day. I was like, you're gonna win. You're gonna be the first one. She wasn't. She wasn't gonna win this shit. She wasn't gonna come. Then I made her come. I, I, I had told T Rope to move her so she could be in, so she could come in and then she won. She wasn't gonna come. I, that's crazy. Yeah. That's crazy. I'm so glad she won. Like I was so happy for her. Shit. So happy for her. She deserved. She won one. number cool like number one. Number one. one. She won one. Number one. And so she first deserved. It. Matter of fact, it was, it, was, it was only one guy that made it. That made he had third place. Was all women. It was Samantha B won it. Lillian Cannon came in second. No, no, no. Lillian Cannon came in third. No, yeah, she, she shared did. it with um. Oh yeah, yeah. Li- with um, yeah, with yeah. Leonard. Yeah, Sam Leonard. Sam Leonard. Yeah. And then yeah. Jasmine, Jasmine came in second. second. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. It was all women that they wow. killed. Wow, all women killed last it. year. Yeah. yeah. So. So this year. Okay. Back. Know. Okay. Speaking of of get, get real quick because I I want to move on. True. All right, do, what, oh, real quick, because I, I want to move real on. Real quick, kind of like back to my point. So, I mean, did she like bring anybody though, or y- y- you know what I, I don't mean? Think, like, I don't think she did. She no. just brought the. She maybe brought like she, one or two people, but she just she brought her fiance and a couple of people. But yeah, she and she, she just kills it. And she's, she's also one, she's a woman. So good, she kills it. Everybody votes. If she, she came here, she would have you like about to throw up. Oh, you'd be howling really? right now. Yeah, she would. Yeah, she's somewhere. I might have to go. She's check her out. fucking. I would tell, like the first time I met Sam. Actually, I met her like from at the improv. I went to an improv. Um, show and my like I was like wearing wigs and dresses and shit mm-hmm. and like my comedy was like mean so I don't remember what the fuck I said he was mean we was like she got like, <laughs> like, first time no. I saw me and Jay was like she's very angry like, yes oh, so, yeah. that's how I would describe um, Christina McNeese she was like this angry black woman you know you, like you intimidated me like, in the beginning but people act like like somebody called me angry one time and I had to explain he was like yeah you're that mean comedian and you're like, <laughs> oh, <laughs> mean shit but here the thing like I had I had him crying and his girlfriend crying and me crying I was like you know what the fuck is mean the, the fuck what's mean is I'm afraid to drive at night and the fact that my son is 18 I'm afraid that he has a license and the fact that we're afraid for our actual lives like I could actually die and nobody would give a fuck and there would be no justice that's what the fuck is mean there's poverty there's homelessness there's people dying there's actual real slavery and shit there's actual real issues mm-hmm. so I'm talking about that shit that doesn't make me mean I right. like fucking daffodils and prancing around too, but that's not the fucking reality of the world I live in. So that's not what the fuck I'm gonna talk about. That's mm-hmm. right. I so like that's that. what I had on. See, she, but does, I wear she, keep, she gets real. She but does real and shit. And shit. And that was the first time there was black bitches in the front row. So <laughs> I was like, let's start this set talking about hating ass bitches because there's always at least one fucking bitch around. I and like love being loud. That all you bitches so like, out there, just keep your comments to yourself. Yes. Like the first time, and they were all like, you gotta bring crazy. the wig back, man. That's awesome. Uh, man, I was that's fantastic. My wig. So. But anyway, so I got off stage, and then Sam got on. She was like, I don't know who that pretty bitch is, but she needs some dick. She is angry. <laughs> and I was just like, who are, who is that? She's hilarious. And when was this? That was like four or five yeah, years ago. Okay. I've heard the story, I think, before. You're like somewhat of a legend. 
Oh, no. of the wig throw? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Very good. I didn't know at that time. We're going to have a t- t- Pittsburgh. I've been telling her for years well, to bring it back. Well, we're going to throw up another topic All right. here in just a second. We're going to take a quick break. And when we come back out of the break, we will have the Cooper's Corner. Yes. It's right around the corner right here on the River's Edge Radio Network. Brian Crawford awesome. letting you know that Kevin Slogic, my State Farm agent, in Allison Park is here to help life go right and reminds you that you're listening to the River's Edge Radio Network. Hi, I'm Rob Spear, host of Damn Near Killed Him, an interview show where anything goes. Once they gave it to me, you could have stuck a telephone pole up my ass. I was about to be, like, kicked out of the country. <laughs> That's where they send the worst of the worst. In a psych ward. It, it, like, normal things seem so weird in there. Who is making $5,000 a month doing gay audiobooks? Hear some stories from people who have been to the edge and back Thursday morning at 9 a.m. on River's Edge P- pgh.com or download on itunes i mean that's like some pretty cool shit hey river's edge listeners alex here from the mike sasson show and boy have i got to tell you about salon 22 a small local business located right here in millville i got my hair colored there about two weeks ago and i still can't stop staring at myself they use this awesome new technique called color melting to make me look like a mermaid But don't worry, if mermaid hair isn't your thing, they'll meet all your hair goals. With things like balayage, rose gold, unicorn hair, ombre, as well as monochromatic color, which is your standard basic coloring. Seriously, they do it all, and they do it good. Check Salon 22 out on Facebook and mention this ad when you make your appointment to receive a free color lock service to help preserve your color. It's a $20 value for free. I'm not kidding. Book your appointment now by calling 412-822-7222. That's 412-822-7222. Go, it's green, come on! Go! God damn it, Brian, you need to calm down on the road rage. I'm sick of these people, these assholes. The road rage, man, you gotta calm down on the road rage. Well, I'm on where or... I want to get to where we're going. We have a lot of great stuff coming up. We're going to the Falling Water. Bicycle Heaven. The Mattress Factory. Tuck Knob. Trundle Manor. All right, which way do I go? Which uh, way do I go? Come on, right, come on. Right, Too late now. Right, come on. Well, too late now, you know, I got to keep going. I'm not going to sleep oh, like some asshole. Oh, come on, man. All right, you're listening to the Culture Cruise. You can find us at riversedgepgh.com. Your local Pittsburgh area museum podcast. Yes, riversedgepgh.com and come Take a ride with us. The Double O Bar, Grant Avenue, Millville, Pennsylvania, reminding you that you're listening to the River's Edge Radio Network. Yeah. Yeah. It's the remix. Cooper's Corner. Cooper's Corner. Cooper's Corner. A Cooper's Corner. Cooper's Corner. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, bitches. It gets better every single time. <laughs> I love it. We switch it up every time. Come on. We need Christina some was thrown off by that. She didn't see that coming. <laughs> Welcome, everybody, to Cooper's Corner on Rivers Talk. Um, I wanted to talk about, um, I, I just found about found out about this yesterday. Um, they actually had weird holidays for every day of the year. Yeah. Which I found interesting. So what I did was I just did from today, which is the 9th, and it goes all the way to um, the 31st and shit. And what I saw today, today is Christmas card day. Really? Wow. Did not know about that. That's a stupid holiday. <laughs> it is a stupid holiday. But you know what? I started thinking about what you said that one time. Because remember that you got a card from somebody and... It, it wasn't from like anybody from Oh, from the Geico. Show. When yeah, Geico was yeah. the only one to send me, Brian Crawford, for, for a birthday, birthday gift. Yeah. That's only right. Geico. And Everybody. they're not even my insurance company either. So Oh, I, they were never your insurance company? They were never my insurance yeah, company. They must have yeah. really wanted your business. They, well, I mean, Hallmark closes they, are, they must be fans of the show. Well, that's the thing. I mean, you know, you get a customer like Brian Crawford, and then you can use that in your marketing campaign. <laughs> yes. Like Brian Crawford. Yeah. For all those listening. So, was, what, so what I did with Christmas card day, I brought some Christmas cards and stuff. I didn't get a chance oh, wow. to write them, but I'm going to write them out now as we speak. Who are they for? Well, one's for you. Oh, all right. For you, one for you. I didn't know you was coming, dude, so yeah, I... Yeah, you don't get a Christmas card. Oh. Yeah, sorry about that, but you know what? As I'm writing, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm going to speak it out We're as I write. This one's card. to Brian. Okay. Um, always, 
you, you, you've you been a good friend. Appreciate you. And we got to get drunk again soon. Uh, okay. So that's what I'm going to say. I'm, I'm going to okay say, let's that. get drunk again hey, soon. Hey, I'll be starting right after this show. So. <laughs> <laughs> so what other weird holidays are there that for every day of the week? You know what? For tomorrow, it's Jane Addams Day. I, I tried to look her up. I don't know who she the related Jane to like Adams Sam is. Adams? I have no idea. I mean, it's with two D's, so I'm not sure. I had no idea who it is. This one, maybe is she's more of like a liquor drinker. She, you know, if you got the Sam Adams Brewery, maybe you got the the Jane Adams Distillery somewhere. So does that mean that's like the light beer version? I'm no, that's that <laughs> that would be much stronger. Except for that no. one beer that they have. They have you that saw one the beer. Christina looked at me. See, she's yeah. a feminist too. Oh no. So she she really gave me the the stink eye. Well, here I am. Here I am saying that she's a badass. Like she's running a distillery, yeah. which is way more, you know. People know I'm a chauvinist at times, so that's why yeah, I, had to I can be like that. In your face. I know, yeah. right? Thank God you're sitting over there and not next well, to me. Well, Jay, if you, as you scroll through the other different holidays, where's Child, avo- uh, child Support Avoidance Day? Um, <laughs> I'm looking yeah, for nothing that. like that. Oh, uh, also well, on the tip, Dewey I'm Decimal I'm going to start off my son's day. birthday. What's the Dewey Decimal, Dewey Decimal System? I know, right? What's the Dewey Decimal System? It's something that got <laughs> Some um, sort of lost. library thing? Yeah, it's got, library, yeah, it got yeah. lost in the shuffle back in the early 2000s. Every computer took over the shit. But remember Dewey Decimal Dewey, System? Yes. How we had to look through that shit so to that try and awesome. find books? That was kind of neat. Uh, do they still exist? At the library. In some libraries? Certain libraries, yeah. yeah. Do they? The library. It's yeah, right yeah I like it too. Hey, when computers I, uh, crash, party. that's always a fallback. You know, everything is still done on paper and stuff. So, you know. I feel like I'm a cyborg now. Why? Uh, because, so like, uh, we were talking, I don't think we mentioned this on air, we were talking off air, Howie, um, we've got Howie D. Mack, Jay Cooper, I'm Brian Crawford, you're listening to River Talk, Christina and Hank, the businessman in the studio. I went from nothing, no technology, as, as you're aware, Howie, uh, mm-hmm. except for what we have here, I personally had nothing. I, I bought a $50 netbook that was used from the Goodwill to uh-huh. try to get by, <laughs> and I wasn't able to like even edit the website with it because it was such such bad technology Mm -hmm. so i had nothing that was my most recent that was a recent purchase that i made it was a a business decision you thank you very much so uh yes i bought this it failed so then now finally i broke down my cell phone died it was cracked it was still usable but then i leaned on it on accident and the entire screen went so i had to buy a new cell phone i was going to the sprint store to get the cheapest model available, just a hundred dollar cell phone. Right. And while I was looking up phones, I found that this phone here, you can buy a dock for it that turns it into a desktop computer. What phone a, is that? What phone is the that? The Galaxy Note Eight. That's pretty sweet. Actually. So yeah, so it's the most yeah, woo! It's like the most expensive phone there is, or except for maybe the iPhone, but it does more stuff than the iPhone. So I went with like the top model, and while I'm there, this dude's like, hey, you know. You can get a tablet for 20 bucks a month. And I'm like, I don't know. I'll think about it. So I go home, and I thought about it, and I decided to do it. So I came back, and I got, like, the best iPad that they make, the iPad Pro. It's, like, the best tablet out there, except for maybe the Microsoft one, but they didn't offer that. So I got that. And then, just yesterday, I got this fancy watch. Like, I saw you had the watch there. And this watch, like, monitors everything I do. It knows when I sleep. It monitors my 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 heart beating all this other crap so i feel like i'm becoming a cyborg like everything like i do is is interconnected and attached and i've got like devices monitoring my life force and everything else it's weird i feel like i could be the modern day darth vader that's that's, that's, that's it a modern day that's that's where where i'm going with this yeah Yeah. i I like that you would look good in black thank you you would (laughs) You but would. yeah, it's a crazy. different mask no, instead of that horse mask you wear so much. Yeah, <laughs> the horse mask. Uh, sorry, horse heading is still cool. I don't care where the as culture's long as they going. keep making that movie, The Strangers. Then yeah, it will be. Is I've never even seen no, that movie. Is there a movie technology. with a horse mask in it? I believe so. I think there's one with a horse mask in it. That, that was probably scary shit out of me. There's I made yeah. a lot of things horse scare me, horse masks. Like horse yeah, horse well that the creepy horse mask is on the rage. I remember this one time. So I, a friend of mine is actually a furry. <laughs> and <laughs> actually, I admit you have a friend yeah. who's so, a furry. Shout my out. friend who's a furry, Please, he, he kept, him here. I he kept him telling here. me <laughs> that I should come to Anthrocon and check it out. So one day I decided, you know what, I'm going to walk down there and, and check it out and see what's going on. I never went in 
because I just walked around town for like a quick minute. But I'm down there and I decided, you know what, if I'm going to be outside of the convention center where all this shit's going down, I'm going to wear the creepy horse mask. So I brought the creepy horse mask, I put it on, and I walked around and I felt bad for these furry people because... Me and my $10 creepy horse mask was getting way more attention than anybody there with their, like, multi, like, thousand dollar suits. These parents are coming up to me with their kids. Can I get your picture with with the kids? And I'm thinking, you see how creepy this motherfucking thing is? You want this? (laughs) You want me to be, like, putting my arm around your kid? Like... So how many pictures the creepy did you horse take? mask? There were like several. Like I was popular. <laughs> People, but Wait, they couldn't leave the fame. There? They couldn't leave the I fame. This, this isn't like a furry convention. It, it was, was a furry convention, yeah, but, but you know when they come to like, town, it's kind of like Disney World. Yeah, oh, everybody. It's innocent. Yeah, you never, you, you, never, you never saw it. No, I, I, I'm, I'm oblivious. I don't know. What? Yeah, well, so what do you what? think it was? When I hear furry, I think of orgy, <laughs> you know, some did. backroom shady shit in, in Mr. Small's, you know, the fun house. <laughs> Somebody told me who works at the hotel and at the convention center that those, the fur, they caught furries fucking in the stairwell of and course. all type of crazy stuff. Which now, now I'm interested. He'll be, he'll be the next furry at the yeah, convention. Yeah, like yeah, I want to have anonymous sex. I want oh. me and my what, what kind of cars? What, what, what would I look like? I'm going Ewok. I'm going Ewok. I don't know. <laughs> I'm if going I, Ewok. I don't know. You may not be accepted oh, into the community that way because that's not an actual animal. It is for you, Allie. None of those so, are real. He had the biggest. Neither the did dog letter. with the Superman with the Superman cape on either. The one the guy dressed almost like underdog. If I'm, <laughs> so I was Speaking just informed underdog, by. There's a day for that too. Is there? Underdog Day on the 19th. What on the 19th? Yep. Mm-hmm. No, that says. Oh, okay. Day. There's two. Huh? There's ugly sweater day. day. Yeah, you wore well. that already. Yeah. What are you trying to say about my sweater, man? I'm just saying. Didn't you wear like a couple? I saw. I was watching uh, River. Who, that, I, I was that, that's kind of that's kind of that's kind of a matter of of, per, of perception and opinion to call my awesome Darth Vader wearing a scarf sweater ugly. I thought it was it beautiful. Was it's a beautiful sweater. It's it not was an ugly the sweater. most beautiful ugly Christmas sweater I've ever seen. It was uh, it was a fucking badass sweater. Is and what the, it was. Didn't it light ugly, up? Shit ugly. Too? I'm sorry. Like, didn't it light up? No, it didn't light it up. Didn't no, light no. Up. It just, he's watching oh, that. Uh, he's watching that commercial. He's watching that commercial too much. The guy with the Oakland Raider sweater. Turn it off. All oh, I'm saying hey, is the. Right all I'm saying out. is the force is not with you, my friend. You wanna you wanna bad mouth the Dark Lord oh, himself. Oh, speaking of uh, Star Wars, <laughs> did you see the hockey game? They had it yeah, was Star uh, Dan Wars Potash yeah, dressed yeah, up as Potash, Darth Maul. <laughs> that was fantastic. Yeah. That was awesome. I saw that picture. And yeah, it, it was on for like the longest time too. Yeah, that was the day we was at that mic. Where was we at? Pittsburgh. That was Thursday. She said, "Don't Brazil is defending you." She said, "Don't disrespect the sweater." Thank you, Brazil. See, Brazil knows what the <laughs> fuck she's talking about. That's all I'm saying. So uh, I do want to talk about this business transaction that we have. Uh, coming up, and that is Jump. this Wednesday, correct? <laughs> yeah, baby. So tell me about that. All right. Well, your businessman right here, Hank, the businessman, businessman by trade. I'm going to be playing my hundred set of 2017 uh, this Wednesday at Papa D's, and it's going to be rad. All what do you have planned for this for this hundredth episode? How did you make the deal happen? How did I seal the deal? Um, I guess just through networking, and uh, I met this guy named Ryan. Shout out to Ryan if you're watching. You might not be, but I feel like. I should shout you out. Uh, I met him, and he asked me to do a show, and it kind of just fell right in where my 100 shows was coming down to, so that's why I decided to just kind of coin it as my 100 show. So Very yep. cool. Yes. Yeah, S- so uh, you are the businessman. How did you, yeah. co- how did you uh, come across this persona? Is it a persona, or is it the real deal? Uh, no, it, it's the real deal. Um, I Well, I'm... I have a more flexible job now, but the businessman all came about when I got like a really good job, um, making a lot of money, a lot more money than I'm making now. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, it just, it kind of changed my life. And, uh, so the, the shirt and tie, that's really what you wear. Uh, well, he does wear that when he performs. You, I know you, that. Okay. Cause you look like you're about to go on set of Jerry Springer. Like you were about to get ready to be told. This isn't that. Jerry Springer. Wait a minute. Wait, oh, I'm in the wrong studio. <laughs> right? Oh, sorry. All right. I sorry, mean, you just look like, I don't know if you ever watched Jerry Springer. Like, they have the shirts, like, 
and with the tie and stuff, it just looked like he's like it's easily able to be ripped off when a, when a fight's about to well, break there's out. Some, there's some thinking, kind like, of business going on in, on Jerry Springer, so yeah, right? Yeah. yeah, there's some there's some business going on in the studio right now. Um, well, I'm really a man. No, I'm kidding. Let me not go there. <laughs> that is, Jerry, that, <laughs> Jerry, so, look, 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 look. Let's I'm talk like, about this bu- this business transaction. Like, how did you get on this show? I mean, you, I, I mean, let's talk about that discussion. I know there was a yeah. business a business deal being made. Well, you, you tried to get on the show. I was kind of like, eh, I don't know. In the, in the world, know, I don't I don't just let anybody on this show. Yeah, and you know, in the world of, are you talking about the business transaction of being on the River's Edge? Yeah, the, yeah, this. Oh, exactly, the River's Edge. Yeah. You know, and that was a hard. That was a tough negotiation. Tough, very swift uh, negotiation. I had to, um, you know, pull that one out of my back pocket. And being the businessman, the businessman by trade, of course. I had to I had to talk down to not talk down but talk with the 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 big exec heads at the River's Edge Radio. Um, yeah, they they they're like you know come on let this guy on. I'm like I don't know I never you know I'm like I heard of them. Just imagine this I, giant I just, giant room of huge room and this giant overly obnoxious table with these exec heads and they all look the same. Oh yeah, we were in the conference center. Were, I was there, you know, being the big shot that I am in, in one of the, the owners of this company. I was there. I, I actually, I kind of wanted to bring you on, but I didn't want to, I didn't want you to know that I was interested in having you on as a guest. Because let me, let me be clear. Mm. Nothing happens in this network without my approval because, you know, I as well am a businessman. And uh, people, you know, they, the, the business <laughs> executives, the underlings, the, the minions, they all were... We're, we're kind of I, I had them playing this game where you wanted to come on mm-hmm. I wanted you to come on but I didn't want them or I want, didn't want you to know that I wanted to get you on so I, I kind of pitted them against you to try to come up with the best deal possible and yeah. I think I think it worked out for for all parties yeah um, were you intimidated when you came into that boardroom and you saw like an entire room <laughs> full of, of suits and ties uh, was I intimidated no no, not at all. Not at all. I knew that I always have. You always have to have an ace up your sleeve in the business world. You always have to have the upper hand. And of course, I walked in there and you know solidified the deal pretty quickly. If I uh, if I recall correctly, Brian was eating out of my hand. I, what was it? I think I work. For, you work for me now. No, so, no I don't damn. know about that. So not only did I go in there and get the deal, but I, I now I got some new employees. So right. oh, we'll <laughs> see how that growing, works. Everybody. We'll see how that works as as, as time transpires. But <laughs> you'll have to get through all of the the team of lawyers that that works for the mm. Rivers Edge that we have. You know, just at our disposal. That's the kind of thing. You know, we're we're kind of like Apple in that regard. Hank, where we've just got teams and teams of lawyers, and, and we'll just literally spend obscene amount of money with all of our great sponsors. You know, we, we we can do this because we've got great sponsors like Hans, the Double L, State Farm, and and uh, shout out to you guys. Yeah, shout out to all of those guys. Uh, Salon Twenty Two. You know, the big spenders in town who have allowed us to to have the capital necessary. To, to to really put a, a small time businessman like you under, mm. well, it's not small time in, in skill, but small time as far as you know, like your company in comparison to this giant, giant behemoth that is the River's Edge. And you know, we're we're talking about um, that the River's Edge, you know, is is giving me the opportunity to come on the show. So it's almost sort of like advertising for myself. And going in there with the deal, it was you know. A little intimidating, but you you know talking to Brian as a businessman as he is you know not as much of a businessman by trade. No, like of course not. Just man, no. businessman by trade. But you know, no, I mean, I, I can't be that much of a businessman because I'm too busy out there trying to save the city as Pittsburgh's moral compass. Save the city as Pittsburgh's moral compass. That's that's a different topic. Um, what's wrong with the moral compass in, in Pittsburgh then? Uh, trust me, this city. If it was the moral compass. If it wasn't for my my altruistic guidance if it wasn't for my all-seeing eyes uh, this city would definitely steer down the wrong path i do my best to try to sorry yeah, can we sorry. turn sorry. that no for, no no like it's sorry. still playing shut it off we're not gonna no more phones are allowed in the studio no, i'm serious no more phones that, that, the volume was supposed air, right. to be down, I'm the guys. I'm man putting my phone he on did it so, the volume. I always have my volume So tell down. us about this transaction going on, <laughs> going down on Wednesday. What do you have planned for it? All right, so Papa D's in Oakland. We're gonna get, we're gonna get weird in the, in the truest definition of it. And I'm, I'm just gonna bring the heat. I've got, I've got the, the pieces in, in place, and. Oakland just better be ready. I mean, it's finals week, so it's already going to be a tumultuous time, surely. But um, 
for any of my Oakland people, if you want to come down and uh, just we're going to rock out. Um, I'm not like the singer songwriter type, even though I just play with an acoustic guitar and some foot percussion. But acoustic. No, OK. Yeah. But not I, I, I think like singer songwriter has sort of become its own genre of, of more of, you know, like sort of quieter, softer rock. Would you? We can't hear you. That's, that's all. Oh, sorry, everybody. But um, yeah. And I I'm not that. I don't fit. I don't fit that description. And you wear that when you perform. Oh yeah. Do you wear the shades? No, no. Go for like a Blues Brothers kind of look. <laughs> Blues Brothers. No, um, no. It, it initially I, I wore the suit and the tie just because when I was done with work it was just easier to go to shows instead of just changing. But I don't. That's have smart. That, I don't have that job anymore. Um, I have a more flexible job where I actually don't wear this, but I just kind of kept the persona. Um, I mean, I plan to 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 get another job just because it's. Trying to find to eat. Brian Brian uh, certainly knows, you know, I, he's had to have many things approved by this in, in, immense board. So, um. <laughs> well, I, let, let's get things c straight here. I don't need to get anything approved. What I say goes. I like to give people the impression that they have some sort of of stake in things. You know, I, I'm a giver. Mm -hmm. So by relinquishing some of my power and allowing you know the underlings to make decisions within the river's edge organization i make them feel like they're more part of a team mm -hmm. so you know it's really just a benevolent act on my part and yeah. that's one thing you gotta you gotta understand you know I, I don't have to go through anyone i choose to yeah we're gonna we're actually gonna start a new segment here uh, uh business advice with brian um you know he's <laughs> very entrepreneurial business um, advice with brian i like it dun 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 a quick, did it, did it, quick little bit business did it, did it, did it, advice from the businessman by trade. Uh, cryptocurrency, everybody. That's all I got to say. So you're into the cryptocurrency. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Is that like maybe. Bitcoin? Yes. Okay. I Damn. don't. I have a hard time getting into it. There we go. I'm Here we go. Coinbase. Look at that, baby. All right, yeah, so. just shout out. There's my business business advice oh, got, for the day. Um, I still don't know what that is. Besides going to my show in Pop, at Papa D's, Oakland, this Wednesday at 9 p.m., it's going to be pretty rad. My and life, Papa is on fire. Man, I ain't been there in a minute. <laughs> Yeah, I think I've only so been in there that really like, Is that going to like equate to money at some point? That, like, yes. That's, like, that's money that you can spend? In yes. Okay. So like, like what is it? Like like bear bonds or something like that? No, because like, if you're like, here. Hold on. You invest. I mean, of course you guys like know how to invest. But like the just the the kind of growth that we've seen with cryptocurrencies is, I mean, the one coin, I, I, I was so pissed that I didn't buy it the other day. But it went up by like 60 bucks in a day. Bitcoin went up by a thousand bucks in one day. It was up to nine. It was up to nineteen eight yesterday on Friday. For everybody about. who's paying your rent, and and you know this time of year, if you're you're celebrating Hanukkah, Kwanzaa, Christmas, whatever. I mean, come on, baby. Like that's what I'm talking about. Like let's make some money. You know, like that light. But what if it fails? Like, because there's there there is talk that there's a lot of ec economists who think that this is going to be uh, this is a bubble and it's going to burst. Oh, yes, yeah. it will. Of course, it will. They all do. Being a, uh, a swift. And a diligent investor, um, sort of. You should. You see. Should. Once you get so big, you just get. So you, you, just have you, to... you You have people who do that for you. I don't have to look at investments. I've got underlings that manage the accounts and do the investing. Is, is you know the investments for Absolutely. Me. I think so. you should do some equity financing here at the River's Edge. Sell uh, some stocks. Hear that, everybody? IPO of the River's Edge. I get your piece. So I like it. Native Two shares. Right I'm taking. I'm taking control. It all Hostile takeover. All different currencies. See. So I did not know it's going to be a fun there. show. Yeah. Wow. And yeah, can you, well, let's get all the information for that one more time, so people know where to show up. All right, everybody, you need to turn up your speakers. I'll give you the opportunity to turn up all your headphones and whatever. It's at Papa D's in Oakland this Wednesday, December thirteenth at nine p.m. Um, I'm going to burn that place to the ground with my rock. That's a metaphor for Papa D. For the, these people who might be listening, but we're gonna rock. So the Papa house. D's, they they're the ones. The one in Carnegie has like the ones with the commercials, right? Like they, I know they've got like this really like older guy. Or no, that's Papa J's. Never mind. Okay. That's yeah. thank you. Chris. Yeah, Papa glad you D's. said it because I was glad you yeah, said I'm it. I'm like, wait a minute, Papa what? J's. I was like, wait a minute. Yeah, Papa J's. They have like this this commercial, and the big selling point is we've got a parking lot. <laughs> and it's a they literally spent the entire commercial like saying, "Look, you can park here." Isn't that the we've place got that, a lot? Isn't that the place that used to be a brothel? Ooh, Maybe. I've always wanted to own one. <laughs> you know what? We were going money. through. We were driving to Ohio, mm -hmm. and this is back when the iPhone Siri was new. Okay. And, and she was the only AI that existed. Okay. And we're asking her all sorts of crazy questions, and we asked her, "Siri, find me a brothel." 
And it literally came up. There's an escort service. Nah, 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 nah. And she showed us where we could find a brothel wow. in Ohio. Like, she knew her shit. It was crazy. Talking about Talking about shit. I don't know if it's... Yeah, yeah. Talking about uh, people and, and, you know, their shit. We've got the hood rat of the week. And it is right now on the river's edge. <laughs> <laughs> that never gets old. I love that. Man. Shout out to the should have been president, Miss Hillary Clinton, for her laugh. I'm a Bernie man myself. Yeah, I'm with, yeah. I'm with you. Whoa. Whoa. That wasn't me this you, time. We don't need that oh, anymore, huh? Snap. There we go. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, when you hear that music, you know the Hood Rat of the Week is coming up. And I want to talk about this woman from Nevada. Nevada? Yep, Nevada. <laughs> this actually happened a couple days ago. Ghetto. This was posted Nevada. on the 4th of December. <laughs> it was about this woman who was arrested on suspicion of drunk driving after she drove down a highway the wrong way. She was only, she, oh. that's the way she wanted to oh, go. Oh, no, no, there's more. Then she <laughs> danced on top of her SUV and then attempted to flee from the officers on a kid's scooter. So she's just trying to entertain the people. Like, I yeah. guess, because I'm thinking to they myself, the SUV right? must not have been fast enough. You know what? We she had to hop on a kid's scooter. And I'm wondering what kind of scooter are we talking about? Are we talking about the Razor scooter? Kind of are we talking about the on. motorized scooter? Yeah, what kind of drugs is this bitch on? Well, they, yeah, yeah, that's more than drunk. They, that's they more said, than drunk. Right, because they said DUI, <laughs> but they didn't say she was drunk or not. So I was that's wondering what... Drunk was, right there. I'm and where did the kid's scooter come from? That's another thing I wanted to know that was in the article. I'm like, like where did it come from? Um, the lady's name, 27-year-old Sabra Bewley, um, who was dancing on top of her Jeep so, Cherokee, which for is... For the music festival this year, which is going to be May 12th, all across Millville, millvillemusic.org, if you're a musician and, oh, yeah. and you would like to sign up. Yeah. We also are going to have street performers this year. I'm wondering if she was is available. <laughs> um, maybe after she... <laughs> <laughs> it talks about what the cop because right now she's arrested on suspicion of possession of a controlled substance, trafficking MDMA, and destruction of property and resisting arrest. So she was just controlling she, the scooter. What you're, uh, they right. want you to? They want you to drive haphazardly down the road? Like I don't get it. She she might make it back. I mean, when, when's the music festival? May twelfth. May twelfth. She might be able to. She mm. she might, she she'll be I out. Mean, she might parole out by then. <laughs> She she'll be out. Have There's more out. fucked up shit going on in together. Vegas, man. That's nothing. I'm sure she'll be out in like two days. She's out. She's yeah. Out. She's out. She's probably out now. Yeah. Probably out right now. Christmas shopping. Out of car. Christmas shopping. Probably Christmas shopping through Target Jenny right now signs. on the scooter that she tried to flee from the cops. She needed a new one. Besides the scooter, it sounds like living the dream a little bit. I know, right? It must be nice out in it's Vegas. Like the, the weather must be really car, good for her to like, do wait, that, that shit. That was out in Vegas? Oh, this was in, yeah. I thought this was like on 28 or something, yeah, right? Oh, that really would have been crazier if it was. I was like, damn. Right. Is there a picture up? Do you see? Oh, she, I, we she did it. it. We showed it. Oh, yeah, okay. it was there. oh my God. Did you see how crazy no, she was, people? Here, I'll, uh, she looked, I'll, she I'll looked bad. I'll pull it up one more time for those of you who are watching yes. the video. If you're listening to the video, let's try to describe her. What's up, she, Unc? She's got, like, 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 how would you describe this woman? She's kind of got frizzy hair. Yeah, I'm going to be duck down. A splash of purple, but it's like in a weird spot. She looked like she uses Kool-Aid packets to dye her hair. I don't think she goes to a salon. It's like multiple colors. <laughs> yeah. I think she's like a nice, probably a good citizen, you know, like. I mean, she's entertaining the masses. She's so. definitely entertaining. Yeah. Yeah. This is this is her. So let's describe her for those of the, who are listening, the listening audience. Is she, she's, is she's not tasered or anything? Nah, they didn't taser like they tased that woman at Western Psych. Ooh, yeah. should I have said that? Mm. <laughs> My bad. Is it in the news? It is now. The news? And I don't the know. Yeah, it made the news. It made the, okay, right. yeah. Okay. So right. she's got this purple hair. And the thing that, like, I, I don't, why do people do, like, I understand, like, a little bit of a flare like or whatever like but why do people put in like like there was this one girl who i worked with she had this sewage green color that she yes. put in just like a little part of her hair and it just kind of looked like i don't know she got like just got back from partying with michelangelo Wow. Down Did in the she sewers. start green or just it turned that color? I don't. I I imagine Ooh. knowing this person who i worked with i imagine she intended it to be that color. Is she pretty? That's a matter of opinion. That's a no. <laughs> That's a no. Yeah, wow, if he, had, he had to backtrack I that shit. Say he had that. Like, I want to. I want to. I'm gonna use that right there. 
Is she pretty? That's a matter of opinion. <laughs> yeah, that's a matter of opinion. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. I'm going to use that. <laughs> so I'm no longer put on the spot. But usually it's the ugly ones that usually um, do shit to their hair to try to take the attention off their face. It's oh. the ugly ones. Mm-hmm. Well, some mo- for the most part, yeah. I mean, that's what I see. Oh, I, I'll get, you don't know. get me started on. See, what always bothers me is yeah. when somebody is an attractive person and they do everything in their power to make themselves look unattractive. Mm-hmm. Why well, do people do that? Because sometimes you don't feel like being bothered with other people's shit. Oh, okay, I guess you I can see I that. Mean? Yeah. Like on stage, it sucks sometimes. Like if you look really, if you look really nice, like as a woman on stage. Like there, that's why I snatched my wig off the first time because there was three bitches that like had a problem with that. Like there's sometimes like women don't want other women to look cute and shit. Like I go to work and I will probably take this off because I work with a lot of women and I'll fucking want to hear their mouth. Like mm-hmm. I, I want them to think they're prettier than me, they're smarter than me, they're better, they're that everier than me, so I can be left the fuck alone. That's a shame that people act that way because like why why would you care? You know, like I I, I don't know. Like I always just try to focus on what I'm doing. But they'll sabotage your shit over that. You know what I yeah. mean? Yeah, like, mm-hmm. that's pretty petty. I've had women not laugh at my jokes on petty. purpose, like just like sitting there, like. <laughs> that's like, crazy. Oh, well, then look who's the new joke. Let's talk about this. Dude. Exactly. We're gonna talk about you now. You know, because so we comedians, we, we're like that sometimes. We, we could we, there could be like a room of two hundred people. We'll have like one hundred ninety eight of them laughing, and then it'd be them two motherfuckers that's like sque- the stone that, face. that's squeezing lemons and shit. And then it's like, okay, face. you know what? I ain't even thinking about the ones laughing. I'm focused on your ass now. I'm coming on. I'm coming after you. I, I, I I'm gonna make you laugh, too. motherfucker. If, if you don't laugh, yeah, I'm gonna have wrong. them laughing I, at was, you. Was, 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 dude was on stage. He's like, he's like, hey, you girls aren't laughing. Say something funny. <laughs> That uh, really? Oh. No, you didn't. Bring that up. <laughs> yeah. That thing called heckler. Yeah. You I always say that. We're not even gonna say which comic said <laughs> yeah, that either. But that was that's funny. <laughs> I'm sorry. That's Jeez. That's yeah. That's it. I'm yeah. Like, you set your own say suffer. Up shit to you. That, They're being honest. But They're being that's honest. like, I, as a musician, I've never. I mean, I've played with uh, in um, every kind of personality this year with in this hundred shows, but. I've got to say, like, the hardest thing's got to be a comedian because I've sat for people and they were like, I didn't crack even a smile. And, like, that's got to be hard. Like, mm-hmm. you can. It's well, I think it depends on the laugh. person. Well, some people. Like, yeah, some people just don't want to laugh. Well, well it's not even. Like, what, that's the, or it's they not just even didn't, that. like, being in that. I'm like, well, why I, the fuck no. did you come? Well, no, here's well, the thing. But then there's some people no, just saying no, funny either. To defend the non laughers. So, like, not everybody's like you. You do go to a comedy show and you'll see a lot of people who laugh at a lot of things. I'm somebody who I. I don't laugh a lot, and it's right. just not me. Like, it takes a lot for me to, like, bust out laughing, mm-hmm. but I still think something is funny, yeah. and I still enjoy going, even if I'm not like, <laughs> me, I have never time. seen him yeah, do I that. Never. So I've even, if I'm, even if I'm not doing that the entire time, I'm still enjoying the show. I'm still thinking that and something's that's funny. different than being an asshole and just sitting there like... Oh yeah, like I'll like smile. I'll be like, Haha, you know, like I'll try. Yeah, and, this, this, like, is, this is Brian's laugh. I just, uh, <laughs> no, there are times where I have like, like where I've really, really. But like, if I can, but, but if you do that, it's like okay, well then that's something. But we, that's just how got, I am. So like, I don't think it's like. <laughs> Not that everybody who goes to a comedy show, like I, I don't think it's fair to expect somebody to go to a comedy show. And be like, <laughs> no, but oh no, we don't expect all that. Yeah. Because Has any of you guys ever gotten booed? N- no. Yes. Booed? Really? 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 No. Booed. I've been heckled, I ne- but I haven't been booed. Damn. I haven't been heckled. What have you? What have you, you been booed, Christina? This was like again. I was saying like the Damn. time when I snatched my wig off. Um, I was about to fight this bitch, and I like the well, first time definitely. when I got when I like got booed. I also was about to fight. Like I didn't understand afterwards that like I can just insult them. Like I was really about to beat this dude. Ass. I was about to put my mic down and beat his ass. Oh, but, it was like, a dude. Okay. Careful dude. where you sit at this at this final comedian. But um, I made a child support joke. Like I made some joke about child support, and this it dude was got cut so too. De- it was too mad. personal. It was way and too he personal. Was just like, Boo! And he was like really tall and shit. And Damn. he was like all the way in the back. And I was like, who the fuck is boo? So like he just kept booing me, but there was like women. They're like, he's drunk. Just keep going. You're hilarious. So then like, <laughs> you didn't um, think it, but you was like, fuck that. No, I was who's like, no, fuck that? Who's I don't like when people talk when I'm talking. Like especially not. I don't. You, you're not good with that. That sucks. I can understand I like that. that. Yeah, I really. No, I hate when people talk while I'm talking. Like, no, I completely out. understand what you mean. Like, I really know exactly what you mean. You, you, I know exactly what you mean about someone talking while you're talking. That's really annoying. Super annoying. See, I'll make you part of the damn show, and you're not gonna like it. If I have to make you part of the show, I'm gonna insult your mother. 
mother. Like that's where I'm gonna go with she it. Will I completely go fail. Where real personal, like where uh, your absentee father should have beat your ass. What at. was the child support joke? I'm. I'm, no, I'm I don't, not. It was just like you know something like you know dudes like want to act like. You know, with a condom on, they can't feel it. You know what I mean? But they also can't feel it when it's time to pay child support to take care of your fucking child. Ooh. Oh, my God. You I, know, and he was friends just like some booing, people booing. And I'm sitting there wondering who the fuck fucked him in the first place because he looks like light skin ass olive oil. Like, who? He had. Wow. Light skin olive oil. Who's so, a chick? So anyway, like, the but it's a dude. Story short, he tried to boo me. <laughs> but I started out like 20 years ago as a, as a poet. So yeah, that's like, why she's could, extra like, sensitive. Oh, yeah, okay. poets are sensitive. Yeah, they're way too poets, sensitive. You could like boo me, but you can't outflow me. So like, and I don't like have flowery poetry either. So like, I, spit- I just spit this poem, and he was just like. And I was like, now anyway, back to my set, and then I finished. And see, you're not as mean as you say you are because I was literally talking over you and trying to to talk at the same time to try to see what you were doing. I'm not mean. You were nice. That's the thing. I know you're not, but yeah. You know, people are always like, "You're so mean." It's like I just don't have much. Patience for bullshit. I That's do want to say hi to John, true. who joined us. Uh, he said hello, and he also hey, said hey, he said that girls hey. were, are mean in regards to your uh, your, yes. your story. Hey, and What's up also, to Chris, yeah, Chris Tasha, Tara? Yeah. Hey, um, yeah. shout out to you. It's like Baby hi to, Brazil, hi to Boo Joe Jones, Latrick, all of whoever the hell that is. Yeah, because like, yeah. yeah. see, like that guy's the stuck. worst crowd. <laughs> I do the best in the ones that are like the worst drunkest. I'm like, my people are here. <laughs> and also, I do want to I do want to point people. out too. I'm like I'm here. As we're uh, wrapping things up first. here, yeah. <laughs> so on, let me go and take this here <laughs> on the room's edge. Boo Jones apparently saw me while I was in my creepy horse mask that night during Anthrocon. <laughs> so uh, again, when you're <laughs> famous, <laughs> people you can't even wear. I can't even wear a mask and go out in public. That's how popular Brian he Crawford is. He knew my walk. <laughs> so. Speaking of uh, knowing things and what's going on, Jay Howie, what do you guys have coming up? We are just going to focus on the Pittsburgh Improv Comedy for, Contest. For, for now. For now. We will be back. Yeah, a lot of stuff in the works. A lot yeah, of stuff in the works. It's Wednesday, December 13th at the Pittsburgh Improv. Show starts at 8 o'clock, and you need to get your tickets early. I cannot stress that enough. We sell out every year. Every can year. Can you buy tickets every online? Year. You can yes. buy them online at, at um, improv.com. Um, just go to Pittsburgh and then find the stand-up Pittsburgh comedy competition. You'll see T. Rope's face smiling and shit, you know. And just <laughs> and then choose and then pick up some tickets, man. Come to the show, man. It's always a great show. We sell out every fucking year at the yeah. finals. Don't it's gonna, forget, it's gonna be three hundred plus people there. So Jay Cooper's gonna there be early. there, and Christina McNeese is gonna Christina be McNeese in the finals. There. And Howie ain't gonna, gonna be nowhere time. around. He's gonna be there to support. And I ain't he's gonna, gonna, I ain't he's coming. gonna be there. He's gonna <laughs> vote for me. I'm booing from, the, I'm booing from the back. I'm booing from the back. You know what? You can vote for Christina too. Booing booing from 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 the back. Back. I'm booing from the back. It was yeah. in the whole time. He, was he the can vote thing. for me and Christina. At least you know who it is. For nobody time. else though. Get your short jokes together. I'm gonna be booing from the back. Coming up. Yes. Let's see. I'm at the Improv too. I also do my own events at the Ace Hotel, so I have another open mic. I have an open mic coming up on the 28th at the end of December. Okay, 28th. So come down to that if you want to uh, practice or... Tell them what it's called. It's called Chicksburg Comedy Presents 5 Minutes. You get 5 minutes. Two. Five minutes of fame, I like that. right? No, Isn't it's it five not minutes five minutes of fame, minutes of fame anymore. It's not five minutes of fame no more? Oh, so hey, just hey, one five more time. Yeah. Plug, okay. Wednesday. Uh... Boy for my event? Yes. Okay. Yes. Well, aside from their event, which event you you should definitely go to, but my event in Papa D's <laughs> in Oakland, now that, now that I have the mic, um, it's at Papa D's, 9 p.m. in Oakland. Um, yeah, it's going to be cool. Our what day? Set. All proceeds I personally get. I mean, the other guys are getting paid, but uh, I'm personally <laughs> going to donate all mine to Toys for Tots. So. Oh, very cool. One more t- time. What day? What day? December 13th December at 9. 30. So and when you're oh, done with their... So it's the same day as our oh, shit. Oh, okay, okay. But go to their thing for the first hour, but then, you know, uh, if, they're, if they're not funny, they cast vote. Well, you wouldn't even got to stick around, man. Just, just cast we'll just come vote, in, vote, out. and then leave. Yeah, can I, can <laughs> I, can I, I uh, absentee ballot? Uh, yeah. I, I have a legitimate <laughs> excuse. I can't. I will be back tomorrow night, 7 p.m., right here at Mr. Small's Theater in Woo! the River's Edge yes. studio. Yes. Be back with Michael Cohen. We've got some good things to uh, discuss. That's going to be tomorrow night live on Facebook, 7 p.m. It rebroadcasts Saturday morning, 10 a.m. Thank you so much for uh, to Christina McNeese. Thank you to Hank, the businessman. For Jay Cooper, Howie D. Mac, I'm Brian Crawford. Your intro exit music was Scumbag Inc. by Solar Burn. 
You're listening to local music right after this, all day, every day, 24 hours at RiversEdgePGH.com, Pittsburgh's voice for local music. Later, bitches.